Welcome to this lecture about the chi-square goodness of fit test. In this video we'll go through the basic calculations behind the chi-square goodness of fit test. We'll also compare this test against the one proportion set test that we discussed in the previous video. When we'd like to analyze the proportion of one sample, we can either use the one proportion set test or the chi-square goodness of fit test. There are different types of chi-square tests, and in this video the so-called chi-square goodness of fit test is used to test if the observed frequency distribution differs from a known or hypothesized distribution. We will now compute the chi-square goodness of fit test based on the same example data as in the previous video. In an extensive study from 2015, a group of investigators analyzed how common allergies were in a certain population. The study, which covered the complete population, found that 53% had some sort of allergy, whereas 47% did not have an allergy. Note that this is not a sample, since the whole population was analyzed. Five years later, the investigators wanted to see if the proportion of allergy in the population had changed since 2015. However, this time, the investigators did not have enough resources to analyze the whole population. Instead, they just took a sample of 100 individuals from the population. In this sample, 49 persons, or 49%, had some sort of allergy, whereas 51 individuals did not have an allergy. Based on this sample, we like to know if the proportion of allergic people in the population has changed over the five years. The null hypothesis of this test states that the proportions of individuals with allergies has not changed since 2015, whereas the alternative hypothesis states that there is a change, or that the population proportions in the year 2020 are not identical to the population proportions from 2015. We therefore like to use the chi-square goodness of fit test to test if there is a significant difference in these two distributions that show the proportions of individuals with allergies in 2015 and 2020. The formula for the chi-square goodness of fit test looks like this, where we calculate the square differences between the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies according to the null hypothesis. We then divide the square differences by the expected frequencies and sum for all observations. Let's try this equation on our example data, where our sample size is 100. The proportion of individuals with allergy in our sample is 49%, whereas the proportion according to the null hypothesis is 53%, which corresponds to the population proportion from the study in 2015. Since the test is based on frequencies and not on proportions, we first need to work out the frequencies from our current data. Since 49% of the 100 individuals had allergies, the corresponding frequency is 49. And since 51% of the 100 individuals did not have allergies, the corresponding frequency is 51. In other words, 51 individuals in our sample did not have allergy. According to the null hypothesis, we expect that 53% of the 100 individuals would have allergies, and that 47% do not have allergies. The corresponding expected frequencies are therefore 53 and 47. We now plug in the observed and expected frequencies of the ones with allergy, and the corresponding numbers for the ones which do not have allergies. The calculated chi-square statistic is equal to 0 0.64. The degrees of freedom of this test is the number of levels, k, of the categorical variable minus 1. Since we have two categories, allergy versus non-allergy, we have only one degree of freedom. To compute the p-value, we should therefore use a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom, which looks something like this. The area to the right hand side of 0 0.64 represents our p value. By using a software, our p value is computed to 0 0.42, which is identical to the p value that we obtained from the one proportion set test in the previous lecture. Since the p value is greater than a general significance level of 0 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. 
We can thereby conclude that we do not have enough evidence to say that the proportion of people with allergy has changed since 2015. We will now have a look at the assumptions of the Kaiska Goodness of Fit test, in addition to independent observations in our sample. The expected frequencies in each category must be at least 5. We see that our previous calculated expected frequencies are much greater than 5, which means that we fulfill this assumption. We now have a look at the differences between the chi-square goodness of fit test and the one proportion z test. As we have seen previously, the chi-square statistic and the z statistic are based on different calculations. p hat represents our sample proportion, p0 the proportion according to the null hypothesis, and n is the sample size. Note that since the difference between the observed and expected frequency is squared, the chi-square statistic can only result in a positive value. In contrast, the set statistic does not include such square differences. Therefore, the set statistic can result in either a positive or negative value, depending on the difference between the proportions. It turns out that if you square the set statistic, we get the chi-square statistic. Another difference is that the chi-square test is always one-tailed, since it involves only positive numbers, which means that we can only test if there is a difference, whereas the z-test can either be one or two-tailed, which means that we can test if there is a difference between the proportions, as well as if the population proportion is either greater or less than a hypothesized proportion. Note that the p-value is identical for the chi-square test and the two-tailed one-proportion z-test. A chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom can be seen as a standard normal distribution without any negative numbers. For example, if we would draw 100,000 numbers from a standard normal distribution, a plot a histogram of those numbers, it would look something like this. If we would square all those numbers and generate a histogram, we would get the shape of a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. Since we square the values, all negative values will turn positive. It would be like putting all the negative numbers to the right hand side of the zero in the standard normal distribution. In addition, since we square the numbers, the end of the tail will be much more stretched out. Also, both the chi-square goodness of fit test and the one proportion set test are based on the same assumption that the expected frequencies should be at least 5, since n times p0 or n times 1 minus p0 gives us the expected frequencies. In contrast to the one proportion set test, a chi-square goodness of fit test can be used when we have more than two categories. For example, Let's say that we know that the colors red, blue, and green are equally likely for a certain flower. We then like to test if this is true for a certain forest where the flower is growing. The null hypothesis therefore states that the colors are equally common among the flowers in the forest, whereas the alternative hypothesis states that the proportions of the colors are not equal. We take a random sample from the forest and observe the following proportions of colors based on 90 flowers. The aim is to determine if the population proportion of the colors differs from the hypothesized distribution of the colors, which assumes an equal distribution. Based on a sample size of 90 and the observed proportions, we can calculate the observed frequency of each color. Since we have collected 90 flowers and that we expect an equal distribution, the expected frequency is therefore 30 of each color. We plug in the observed and expected frequencies in the equation. For example, this is the observed and expected frequencies of red flowers, whereas this is the observed and expected frequencies of blue flowers, and this is the corresponding frequencies of green flowers. The chi-square test statistic is calculated to 1.8. Since we have three categories, we will use a chi-square distribution with two degrees of freedom. 
By using a software, you can calculate the area to the right hand side of 1.8. This area is about 0 0.41. Our p value is therefore equal to 0 0.41, which is greater than the general significance level of 0 0.05. We can therefore conclude that the distribution of the colors does not seem to deviate from the null hypothesis of equal proportions. This was the end of this lecture about the k-square goodness of fit test. In the next lecture we'll have a look at these tests again, where we instead will compare two proportions from two samples.